and welcome back to the hot lap. We are talking an interesting piece that Zach Brown has said, suggesting that it's the car and not necessarily all Max Verstappen that's been giving him these championships. Do you agree? I mean, that's absolutely a, a certain element. I guess if you don't have a good car, you're never going to win a championship. For example, a, um, you know, a Mini is never going to be a Ferrari around the track. Um, a fully fledged, you know, Ferrari sports car around the track. Very unlikely at the very least. Take the top gear test track. Ferrari's going to wipe the Mini all day unless, unless that Mini is absolutely souped up. But it's going to be a lot more nuanced than that. It's not as simple as that. So is... Is the big thing, is the big thing to take. Is that car more important than the driver? I think overall, yes. But as I said, it's I think the talk is gonna be way more nuanced than that. So far, so nuanced to the to the point where I there's a clip, um, and this whole story came from the Beyond the Grid podcast, which is available on YouTube and all other podcast makers. And I wanna I would very much love to show you a clip of it, which uh I, that's uh, slightly upset. Um which I'm gonna show you now. And we're gonna we're gonna talk about it. This is obviously Zach Brown talking in the clip. I'm just going to show you the clip of uh, where he says it. Here we go. And when you are putting the jigsaw together of what you need to win, would you rather have a star designer or a star driver? Well, ultimately you need both. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't think without a star driver, you're going to win. So you need both. First, it does start with the car. I mean, the, the best way uh, people ask me all the time is a car or driver. And it's like, well, it's both. But I think that the way I characterize it is I think there are six, seven drivers on the grid that would be world champions in the Red Bull. Well, I mean, first of all, that's quite interesting he says that. Who are these six or seven drivers that could win in the Red Bull? Obviously, you've got Max Verstappen being one. Lewis Hamilton, I think, number two. Um, uh, Fernando Alonso being three. Charles Leclerc, I think, without um, being four. Uh, maybe George Russell, Carlos Sainz being fifth and sixth. Um, yeah, and then obviously he's going to think Lando Nor Norris and Oscar, and potentially Oscar Piastri. I think Lando Norris could could win. I mean, he'd beat if he swapped with Max Verstappen these last few years. I think he'd be world champion absolutely with that Red Bull, especially twenty twenty two. Um, how that you know how that car ended up compared to the Ferrari in the development race and twenty twenty three. But let's carry on. And as great as Max is, and he's one of the best ever, I don't think Max wins the world championship today in any other car other than the Red Bull. So I, I think what that – but then when you look at the difference, and Sergio mm. Perez is an excellent racing driver who's shown on his day, can run with Max, but look at the – the difference there. So I think you need both. I mean, it's interesting, I think, that he says that about Sergio Perez, because Sergio Perez is very clearly not on Max Verstappen's league. And it was it was kind of hinted at when he initially went to McLaren for his big break in, I believe, what was it, 2013, replacing Lewis Hamilton, the, the golf that Lewis Hamilton um, gave, a, you know, gave McLaren. And I think, I can't help but think McLaren thought they'd had another Lewis Hamilton maybe in the car. And yeah, absolutely, uh, I think did not match up to McLaren's expectations and he was gone and he was gone with, you know, he was, he was basically gone within a year, which yeah, is, is a bit sucky. I mean, let's have a look at all the, um, here we go. Here are all, you can see here, here are all the world championships. Um, and let's have a, let's assess whether we think they one in what was the best car so let's let's go with obviously um let's start with 1992 uh nigel mansell that williams was easily the best it was the best beyond beyond any doubt yeah you you can't deny that that williams was the best uh 93 again for us in that Williams, it was the best. Now, 94 is an interesting one because I still think, and we did this video, what if Ayrton Senna, um, that horrible incident at Emma didn't happen. I think Ayrton Senna wins that championship. The Williams was not the best car at the beginning, yet Ayrton Senna um, managed to get pole position, which showed you, I think, that Benetton was better than the Williams. But Ayrton Senna 
one of the best qualifiers was able to get pole position in a car that was not as fast as the Benetton. And significantly in a Benetton that Michael Schumacher was was driving. And that does show that the driver can make a difference. I mean, at, I think at one point Senna was over a second, I think, in qualifying um, or best part on more than one occasion with Damon Hill. He got he got three pole positions in a in a row. Um didn't have any points, sadly, in that championship because he didn't finish any, didn't finish any of the, of those races, did he? So um, yeah, really, really struggling there, but still. So Michael Schumacher, nineteen ninety five. You could bring a case that Williams was was fairly solid. Damon Hill had an absolutely disastrous year, um, but yeah, okay. Driver may have made the diff made the difference there. I do think that Williams was kind of unreliable, but. Hey, it's, it's, it's Michael Schumacher. 96, the Williams was, was the best car. 97, the Williams was the best car. However, once again, we're going to have a caveat here with 97 and 98 because it was Michael Schumacher's brilliance, I think, and his team, and the fact that he was the number one in the team. Yes, Vash Atmanov was number one at Williams, but it wasn't like a Ferrari number one, let's say. And he tested Villeneuve all the way to the end. We had that unfortunate end to the World Championship, but... That is an example again in 97 with Michael Schumacher pushing that Ferrari all the way to the end. Sometimes it was the better car. Yeah, and you could tell that. I mean, the best thing I think that Ross Braun, I believe, said, the best quote Ross Braun came out with whether it's the car or the driver was, he said that um, Eddie Irvine drove the car where it should be and Michael Schumacher, you know, intimating that Michael Schumacher was that difference maker and the difference maker he was i think in 1998 as fast as hakkinen is um and hakkinen won that 98 championship there were times when michael schumacher i mean did miracles for example hungry 1998 um he ended up you know doing that extra he basically made a, a pit stop in a, a very small number of laps he uh, they turned their two stopper to a three stopper at hungary um and absolutely trapped he absolutely trounced McLaren. now i can't imagine eddie irvine ever doing that he had to make up uh essentially a pit stop they put the gamble to try and win the race they went for it and and he did but but that McLaren at the beginning of the year lapped everyone in australia one of the most dominant races i have ever seen in formula one to the point where marcus schumacher had a chance of winning the world championship in 1998. He needed a one-two, a Ferrari one-two. I think we hack him to finish third. But the fact that he still had a shout of winning that championship, once again, I think is down to the driver. Which also means that I think he would have won the championship in that McLaren as well. Although, everyone says how fast Mika was over one lap. And Hakkinen locked into 1999 because obviously Schumacher broke his leg. And it was almost like the championship that no one wanted. <coughs> that same championship that Heinz Harold Frentzen nearly won as well. Excuse me. Um, so 2000 Schumacher. Yeah, I think that Ferrari was just about the better car. And once again, 20, 2001, 2002, that, and 2003, and 2004. Yes, that Ferrari was the best car beyond any doubt. Alonso in 2005, 2006. What's interesting here, I think, in 2005, I think the McLaren was the best car. Um, Kimi Räikkönen was absolutely fantastic in the McLaren, but the caveat being that McLaren was not reliable at all, and I think that's why Fernando Alonso won it. 2006 is an interesting one because I think, um, kind of like 2021, it was very, very even throughout most of that you know, throughout most of the championship. It would have been, it was quite difficult to see what was. The better of the two cars. Ultimately, Fernando Alonso came out on top in 2006. Schumacher retired. Now, 2007 was an interesting one because I think that I think once again it was a really, really even fight. And Kimi Räikkönen, I think McLaren lost that championship rather than Kimi Räikkönen winning it with the uh, inter-team battle, that fight between Fernando Alonso and Lewis Hamilton. So it's a bit of a difficult one. But I think in 2008, a lot of people have said the Ferrari car was the fastest, was the faster of the two cars. When you look at the difference, obviously, between Hamilton and Kovalainen in, in that championship, it was absolutely big. It was absolutely mega. And I think that's an example of the driver, um, you know, making the difference over 
a season. If you remember, Hamilton had that, you know, as much as Felipe Massa's crying about Singapore, Hamilton had that win taken away from in Belgium, which I thought was a really, really unfair with that 20 or 25 second penalty for not letting Raikkonen through properly. But he did. But, it, you know, OK, maybe he didn't do it properly, but then Raikkonen spun out. So then it's quite difficult for him to give the place back. Not that I think Lewis would have done anyway. So 2009, obviously the car. Jensen Button, best car. 2010 is interesting because it's Sebastian Vettel. He didn't leave the championship at all until that last race. But I think that Red Bull, come the end of the season, was the best car, as it was in 2011, 12 and 13. But it was 2012, Fernando Alonso, again, showing us how good the driver is, uh, put Vettel under pressure, going into that last race as a potential champion. And then we had Lewis moving to Mercedes in 2013 and then dominating 14 and 15, it clearly was the best car. But he did have to fight Nico Rosberg, who won in 2016. That may have been thanks to Lewis Unreliability, who then went on uh, on a storm to win it in 17, 18, 19, 20. <coughs> and then we get to 2021, where Max Verstappen won it. But Adrian Newey has come out and suggested, but he would, maybe he's biased, that he felt the Red Bull was the faster of the, you know, of the two cars. It was an epic championship. And... Max Verstappen, but you, you can make an argument. Both both drivers deserve to win it. Hamilton should have won it at the end. Sorry, um, but you know, but Max Verstappen did. Um, so you can make an argument from either way. That's you know, both drivers were so much better than their teammates that year. It was a uh, Valtteri Bottas in the in the Mercedes and Max Verstappen in the Red Bull. But it was, uh, yeah, you know, um, the both. You know, it's the both those drivers really, really dug deep, and it was uh, apart until the end. Uh, apart from those last few laps, it was an amazing championship. So, 22 and 23, Max Verstappen dominated, and 22 is very even, but initially between Charles Leclerc and Max Verstappen, but then Max Verstappen won, and then obviously he dominated again in 2023. 20, so, I think it is the car. I think other drivers could win in that Red Bull, but the driver does make, I think, more of a difference than sometimes we give them we give them credit for um for example Sergio Perez is not touching Max Verstappen now if you put Hamilton and Verstappen in it may well be a different story it's going to be a lot closer so that's why I think it's really really close <coughs> and it's really what interesting what Zach Brown says but I do agree with him I do think there's six or seven drivers on that grid who that could win in a Red Bull whether they'd win with the domination that Max won I mean it, the whole thing's subjective it's difficult to say isn't it? But it's fun to talk, it's absolutely fun to talk about. Anyway, um, that's what I think. I think, yes, it is the car. Yes, uh, Max Verstappen wouldn't win in a Haas, would he? He wouldn't be winning in a Mercedes, and he probably wouldn't be winning in this year's Ferrari or McLaren. Yes, he may have won Miami, Miami because of the McLaren upgrades, for example, but I don't think he'll be, he wouldn't have been winning consistently in either of those two cars last year. Um, I think the driver can make a difference, but not the golf that the Red Bull that the Red Bull was. I think Max Verstappen outside, not in a Red Bull car for twenty two and twenty three, uh, he wouldn't have won that championship. But that's not to say he's not a great driver. But as I said, you can't. You know, you're not going to win in a Haas. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyway, if you uh, made it to the end, give us a subscribe. That'd be absolutely great. Stay tuned for more F1 news. We've got the Indy five hundred starting this week as well, so we'll be all or hopefully all over that. Um, and we will no doubt speak to you soon. So thank you very much. If you like and subscribe, you are a multiple world champion in our eyes. See you soon.